I'm not very happy with the way this team has been playing lately. And I know the fact of the matter is that they're just saving enough for the playoffs. Blah, 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 blah. Pull it up your ass. Or out your ass. Or um, fix it. What's, on my, what's my line? But something about ass. Oh, oh, yeah, they're playing like smelly ass. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's go Panthers. Let's go Panthers. Let's go Panthers. Let's go. Panther fans, <laughs> it's a good day. Nick from Twisted Rooster is here with us. He's spending the night. He's been on vacation. So I'm not going to be too upset. That said, Kachuk is out sick, and Verhage is basically out for the rest of the regular season. And the quote from Maurice was something like, we feel confident, we feel pretty good that he'll be ready for the first round of the playoffs. So, uh, there's that. It's upper body, whether it's his shoulder, wrist, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Bottom line is, this is why we got Tarasenko. So we don't have to worry about uh, trying to figure out where everybody's going to slot in now because <laughs> we're missing two guys. So everybody draws in tonight. Akpozo, Lorenz, Cousins. It's going to be a regular, uh, I wouldn't call it a shit show. It's going to be the, the B team. Remember back in the day when you played uh, for the Optimus Club and there was the A team and then there was the B team and you thought you were good enough for the A team but it turned out you were just one of the better players on the B team? That's what we have out there on the ice tonight is the B team, including Stolarz, who has been better than Bob recently. To be honest, I think Bubba needs a break. Let Stolarz play tonight. Give him Thursday night. Like Bob plays Saturday against the Bruins, and then we'll go from there. We don't need to ride Bob so much. He needs to be fresh for the first run of the playoffs, especially if Carter Verhage's not quite ready. And we know with Maurice, we know we're not sending Verhage out there in the playoffs until he is ready. And I'm sure now that Verhage is hurt, I'm sure the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs are anxiously awaiting that matchup. So, what else are we going to do tonight? Um. I did not see if he made any changes to the defensive pairs. I literally turned on the TV. We've been hanging with Nick. I turned on the TV, and there they were talking about Carter Verhage. So it's not been a fantastic start. Kulikov can't play worse. I think that's the way we can look at the defenses. There's no way Kulikov can play worse than he did last night, right? So we're short, but we've got fresh legs on the ice. We should be beating this team no matter what. I'm going to assume, because of all the guys that are out, Ter Tarasenko, uh, Barkov, we've got plenty of guys to pick it up. Do I want to be without Carter Rahegi long term? No, but Tarasenko is about the best possible uh, replacement that we could have picked up. Um, I'm ready for the regular season. Now I'm not ready for the regular season. Now I want this to drag out a little bit because we need Carter Verhage. Okay, there, there's guys we can win without, and then there's guys that we need in game three of a playoff series in the third period, and we cannot be without Carter Verhage. So um, I don't want to ever see anybody complaining about him not playing defense because he should not be touching anybody. He's got one job and one job only. All right, I don't know what to do with myself tonight. I'm so ready for the playoffs. I'm so tired of them playing like ass, but I want them to stay healthy. I pose those too slow. Let's get two points. One, two, and two points! Oh, wait, no, that, that we held the lead. I'm sorry. I'm overreacting a little bit. I'm in such shock that we managed to hold the lead in that period. I forgot we had to play the rest of the game. We even killed off a five on three. Uh, Montreal still has a uh, power play for a couple of, a couple of seconds, another 30, 40 seconds or something like that. Um, I cannot praise the goaltender in the middle of the game, so I will not. Uh, Aaron Ekblad is an absolute beast. I love to see it. And 
for those of you who did not see the game, if you did not see the game and you haven't looked at the box score, I need you to take a breath because I'm going to prepare to tell you something. You're not going to believe what I'm about to say. Lundell scored a goal. It's true. It's true. We, we gave it right back. We didn't hold that lead for two minutes. We did give it right back. But then Barkoff from Tarasenko, just an absolute beauty. We need to re-sign Vladimir Tarasenko. It's, it's not a question. If we went Barkoff, Tarasenko, Reinhardt for a whole season, I think you could have three guys with like 100 points if they all stayed healthy. And yes, I know that's hyperbolic. But it, we're, we're having a good time, all right? Leave me alone. We finally held the lead. Let's move on to the second period. <laughs> you can't make it up you can't make this up so so we obviously have blown the lead it's three to two montreal after two the general consensus is that Ekblad hurt himself during that little wrestling, tussling move that he made because apparently instead of going to the penalty box when he got the roughing call, he went to the locker room and he hasn't been back. Uh, Kulikov centers the puck. He's on the wall. He centers the puck to the middle of the ice. And in between... Kulikov and Mikola, who he was trying to get the puck to, was the man that Mikola was covering. And of course, the puck got intercepted because, like, the first thing you learn if you're going, I've not played hockey. I've not played hockey. But I'm going to assume that when you first become a hockey defenseman and you're like four years old, I would assume the third thing they tell you, if it's not the second thing they tell you, is. Never send the puck to the middle of the ice in the offensive zone. In your own in your own zone, in the defensive zone. You know what I'm saying, in your own zone. Not that it's all Kulikov's fault. It was a bad play, but this team, I mean, <laughs> it's laughable because I don't think they care. I don't think they care. I don't think they're worried. They did a pregame with Maurice, and basically, to paraphrase and to give you the energy behind what Maurice said, he basically said, look, we made the playoffs. Some guys are a little bit dinged up. We play a hard game. I'm not going to yell at them, but we need to get a little bit more juice going before the playoffs. Basically, he's not even a little bit worried. So it has just become abundantly clear to me that I think that the way that they are playing is, is somewhat purposeful in terms of just not putting in the effort it takes to win games. That said, Ekblad's hurt again. Now, he, I don't think he's going to come back or he would have come back. And I know that this being this time of the year, that even if he you know pulled a nail that Maurice would leave him off the ice in preparation for the playoffs. That's fine. But these games, this is like nails on the chalkboard watching these games. This is bad. I salute every single one of you coming out to the live stream. We got 150 people watching this mess with us. Are we going to lose the Canadians? No disrespect to you Montreal fans, but, I mean, are we really going to lose to the Canadians? We might. Let's move on to third period. Oh! <laughs> I gotta make sure it's recording. Because Nick is here. Nick from Twisted Rister is here. And we might have been drinking and whatnot on the, on the stream. So, for those of you looking for me to yell and scream and rant, look, um, there's nothing else to say about what this team is doing right now. And 
all of the complaints are accurate. Those, there are those of us who think that the team is just holding back for the playoffs. I don't think we're wrong. And then there's people who think this has gone on a little bit too long. And I agree with that. We're, we're playing terribly. It's not just a matter of energy conservation or whatnot. <laughs> this is some of the worst hockey I've seen this team play. We, we look kind of worse than we did last year before uh, the whole Matthew Kachuk's dad, you know, and, and, and the whole team is playing soft thing. Now, you know, I'm not going to use Kachuk and Verhage being out as an excuse because we've seen this team been playing with this lack of daisical effort level for weeks now. Um, hopefully Ekblad's okay, but we say that every other week, <laughs> right? So hopefully he's okay. Um, Stolars didn't have any better of a night than Bob did last night. Is I'm not blaming them. You know, I mean, we just keep leaving guys open and, and breakaways, and it's just, it has been a spectacular fall from where we were when it was the 16 or 18 games, whatever it was, where we allowed two goals or less, and now we basically allowed five goals in a row, two, you know, five goals, two games in a row. I know yesterday was six, but it was empty net. Um... The good news is I hope that we can re-sign Vladimir Tarasenko because he's great with Barkov and Reinhardt. That, that would be spectacular. Um, that's about all the positivity I have for him. It's bad. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, go back and re-watch yesterday's recap. It's, it's this, I mean, literally the same exact thing. Um... You know, tonight we played decent. Obviously, we played well in the first period. We tried to give away the lead, but we didn't. And we made up for it in the second period. Something fierce. And, look, I mean, leave the comments that you're going to leave. I understand. I get it. Okay? Um, all I can do is read into what Maurice is saying in his post games and his pregames. And he don't seem even a little bit worried. Like, I know how this sounds, okay? What the, the scenario that I'm about to paint, I understand it. It probably didn't happen that way and that it sounds crazy. But the way that Maurice is answering the questions about these games, it is almost as if a month ago, whatever it was, they had a team meeting and they all literally sat there and said, look, we're tired. We don't want to wear ourselves out. So we're just going to kind of take the rest of the season off. We'll just coast into the playoffs and we'll turn it on come playoff time. I'm not justifying whether that's the right thing or the wrong thing. Wrong thing. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that the way Maurice is talking about these games, it is as though I expect him at the end of the playoff run to be saying, yeah, we were just holding back the last month. We, we, we did it on purpose. Because he's not even a little bit worried. I mean, at the most, he's saying, well, we do need a little bit more energy. Um, and he's talking about how, you know, we play a heavy game. We got guys that are sick. We got guys that are dinged up. So I'm not going to ride them too hard. Which, I mean, <laughs> when was the last time you heard a hockey coach talk like that? In terms of his team is playing bad, and he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, we made the playoffs, so we'll." I mean, just that's what's do. That's what's happening. It's it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. If if game one playoffs, all of a sudden we're like, "Oh my God, it's the Panthers again!" and they just like wiping the floor with people like we were earlier in the season. If they play the rest of the season the way that they've been playing now and they actually pull it off, or game one, they're just like themselves again, then what we're watching right now is just one giant um, mind screwball. You know what I mean? Because we're watching, expecting to see something, and I have a feeling the team already knows going into the game that 
we're not, as fans, going to get to see what we're hoping to see, which is effort, competitiveness, <laughs> and we just keep losing, and we got obliterated by Montreal. And if that doesn't tell you the level of effort that we're giving out, and I'm not disparaging Montreal. Montebleau played a hell of a game. We had a, we had a bunch of chances during the third period, and he ke he kept Montreal from possibly blowing that lead. I'll give you guys credit. I'm not saying that, but I'm just amazed at how bad we are, even if it's on purpose. Even if that is what we've done, which we are saying, now we're just going to take off the rest of the season. Even saying that, I am amazed at how bad we are. The fundamentals, the passing and the the defensive breakdowns and, and everything that's going on. It, it, I mean, it's bad. It's it's. I don't know if it's like Sharks levels bad, but it's pretty bad. I mean, the Canadians are last place, right? <laughs> they just whooped us. So that's it. Short and sweet. I, there's nothing else to say. I feel bad because, I mean, this is just so much, this is so different. Last year, this time, we were starting that winning streak that propelled us into the playoffs. We were all excited with Lion, and, you know, Duke had come back, and 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 this is just brutal. And I appreciate it. everybody's coming out. We ended up with 175 people on the stream today. And, 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 and what are we seeing? 5-2, 5-3. I mean, we got the goal there towards the end. Um, and just what, what it's doing is it is, it is kind of killing the fans' momentum going into the playoffs. Maybe the team feels like they can turn it on like a light switch game one, but in terms of building momentum and interest and all of that, when you consider the expectations on this team, and then you take into consideration how we've looked this last few weeks. It'll be almost a whole month by the time the season's over. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see playoff games not have not be sold out and not have a ton more people than a regular season game. Because how are you going to build excitement to go into a round one matchup I mean, I guess if we play Toronto or Tampa, that might take care of itself with, with their fans. But the point is, is just that how are you going to have excitement going into this at this point, right? I mean, a month ago, we were on top of the world. And now, I mean, uh, it, it, it's like, are we going to tank to the point where we get a wild card? Because that could happen. They're... they're, they're I mean, we play Tampa again, right? No, we play Toronto again. Do we play Tampa again? I forget. I think we play them. I know we play Boston. But the point is, I mean, if we play like this the rest of the way, I mean, ah, we, 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 we could easily end up just in a wild card spot. Wouldn't that be something to slip all the way to where we ended up first round against Boston all over again? <laughs> All right, that's it. I keep wanting to yawn because I'm drunk. I'm going to go finish the stream with everybody else. And I'll be live tomorrow at noon. And I'm going to sleep. I, I, I just don't know what else. I don't know what to say. I, I don't, and, I, and I mean that wholeheartedly, genuinely, sincerely, and frustratingly. I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. 